Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days uh, for today's second video. So day 10 takes us to the 15th of March and we'll be, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS ensembles they run to around a couple of weeks. And we're going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for April. Join us CFS, uh, we've released Jeremy Frey, so that's the month federal care with Japanese and CFS V2 uh, Mars. It takes us into the beginning of April, so have a look at that. Uh, when you have done uh, with this video, uh, the ECMDF 42 day six weeks look ahead is going to be uh, released first video up tomorrow. We're not live streaming uh, on a Friday night at the moment, so this will be the final uh, video of the day. If you enjoy the content on my channel, please can you uh, smash your like button, make sure you subscribe as well. Thank you so much everybody for doing that, tell your friends, family, everybody else who subscribe. And uh, drop a comment and let us know uh, what you think. Thank you so much everybody. Click the bell and you'll be notified uh, by uh, YouTube when we release videos and also live stream. Right, let's start off with Stratosphere. I have looked at this for a little while, so I thought we'd bring you up to date what's going on uh, in the Stratosphere. You now we've moved into uh, Spring. This is from the JMA. The black line shows uh, temperatures uh, through this season, going all the way back to September, through the autumn, into winter, and now on into uh, Spring in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA in the Stratosphere over the North Pole. The grey line is the trend line. So you see at this time of year, uh, temperatures are typically lifting up on average, uh, reaching their maximum. Maximum in terms of the temperature of the stratosphere over North Pole through the summer and then dropping away as you get through to the end of the summer and into the autumn dates on the bottom of the chart, of course. Been a funny old season, this, in terms of stratospheric temperatures. Generally, uh, warmer than average in most of the season, but now substantially colder than normal in terms of those stratospheric temperatures. So, through the autumn, we had the temperature 10 HPA below average. Then we went up to average, like into the beginning of the winter. Then, of course, around Christmas, New Year, we had a sudden stratospheric warming that lifted the temperature up to uh, minus 20 at uh, 10 HPA. Uh, from like minus 70 uh, just a couple of days before. That's a classic SSW. Then generally through January and into uh, February, or the early part of February anyway, the temperature uh, to 10 HPA was uh, warmer than average. But through February and now into March, we see that we have had a plummet in the temperature at 10 HPA. So uh, yeah, big, big drop in temperatures at uh, 10 HPA. Now, a lot colder than average, uh, with, at around minus 70. Uh, now, the temperature at uh, 10 HPA in the stratosphere, we should be around minus 50. So, around 20 degrees below average with the temperature in the stratosphere at 10 HPA as we come to the end of winter and into the early part of the spring. If we go lower down to 30 HPA, we've also had a temperature crash there as well. So again, we saw the effects of the sun stratospheric warming uh, in January, generally above average with the temperature at uh, 30 HPA. This is close to the troposphere, of course, throughout January and into February, but then through the second half of February, a crash in the temperature at 30 HPA, dropping down close to minus 80 at one point, uh, actually. We're now uh, somewhere around minus 73, minus 75, minus 73, something like that. We should be around minus 60. So at both 10 and 30 HPA, we have had uh, really quite a dramatic uh, cooling going on through the latter part of this winter. It's been as associated with the reduction in the northern blocking. Of course, we know the AO, the NEO combination have gone very positive. We've ramped up the polar vortex as well in association with this drop in the temperature at uh, 10 and also 30 HPA. Of course, we come to the end of the season, so at some point, we are uh, quite soon, we're going to see the end of the polar vortex and we'll warm things up dr dramatically. We'll have our final sun stratospheric warming of the season. Let's see if there's any sign of that in terms of the temperature uh, 10 HPA uh, with the GFS forecast. Let's go to weeks at metroseal.fr. These blue colours are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA that re-emerge through the latter part of the uh, winter. So let's see what happens. Well, over the next sort of week, anyway, we're going to keep uh, cold temperatures going at 10 HP. No change there, no sign of the uh, final sort of sun stratospheric warming. That will uh, be the killing blow for this season's polar vortex. Let's see what happens as we go into extended range with the GFS. Again, just keep those blue colours going. So for the next week, next couple of weeks, temperatures are going to remain significantly 
cold average. We won't see much change on this chart. Let's go back 10 HPA. We won't see much change on this uh, chart. Temperature, the black line, the temperature will remain somewhere between around minus 60 and minus 70 over the uh, next couple of weeks. Now, at some point, we're going to get a final sudden traffic warming that will see its temperature lifting up one last time. Um, but when it happens, remains to be uh, seen. Let's have a look at uh, this chart. This is weatheriscool.com. This is showing uh, the strength of the zonal wings. So you see that through most of the season, again, rows of winter anyway, zonal wings have been uh, weaker than average. The black line is like the trend line. Uh, the red dash line is last year's zonal wings, which were sort of regularly at record-breaking intervals where we have the polar vortex of uh, Jim. The blue line shows how zonal wings have been performing through this, uh, through the past few months, through the winter. Um, so we actually begin back in uh, in the autumn and we go on into winter. This is, of course, where we are right now into uh, March, just here. So the black line shows that zona winds uh, dropped out through January. This, of course, is uh, going to be January just here. So we have a sudden traffic warning. We saw a reversal of zona winds. Zona winds stayed weaker than average throughout uh, uh, throughout January and the first half of February as well. Uh, we had zona winds uh, at neutral. The reverse of zona winds only lasted a few days, of course. That doesn't last very long. Uh, through the first half of January. But but generally, zonal winds were weaker than average through January and into February. Second half of February, as the temperature got colder in the stratosphere at 10 HPA, so the zonal wind at 10 HPA got stronger. And um, and so at the moment, we actually have a stronger than average zonal wind uh, going on right now. So zonal winds, uh, yes, uh, above average with the temperature below average. This is an indication for, of course, what we know has happened. The strengthening of the polar vortex, the return of the Westerners, AO, NAO combination going positive. So everything at the moment is signaled towards westerly and zonal weather. You see that the, uh, the black line sh uh, is dropping, though. Uh, that's the average amount. So this time of year, zonal winds should be dropping out. Zonal winds should be weakening as the temperature uh, 10 HPA gets warmer. Let's put on some forecast data then. So this is how the GFS ensembles are forecasting zonal winds. So it looks like the next couple of weeks, the zonal winds are going to stay strong and may actually get even stronger, actually, as we go further on into uh, March. So certainly no sign of an end to polar vortex and an end to, like, um, uh, the cold temperature 10 HPA and also uh, the, the strength of zonal winds at the moment. Let's see if the CFS V2 is forecasting, or when the CFS V2 is forecasting zonal winds to weaken. So the CFS... The CFS long range uh, ensembles really want to uh, weaken zonal winds any time from now onwards and have them falling out. That's probably the GFS ensembles don't really show that, so it's probably too soon. It looks like it's going to be more into April, I think, here when uh, the zonal winds may start to finally uh, drop out and go into the final reversal of this season. Um, and that will be associated with the last sun stratospheric warming uh, as well. This CFS bias corrected. And even with that, you see that the, even with the bias corrected, uh, the zonal winds uh, look like they're going to start to weaken into the second half of March, potentially, but more particularly into April, I think, is when we're probably facing an end of the zonal winds and a final end to polar vortex. So yeah, it's been a strange season, been a very funny season through most of the winter, zonal winds, and also uh, were weaker than average, and also temperature 10 HPA was warmer than average, and then we come to the very end of the season, uh, in very end of winter and we get like the zone powering up as the temperature at 10 hpa uh, gets a lot colder so it has been a funny old winter in terms of what's been going on in uh, the stratosphere and now of course we rate we wait for the final end of this year's polar vortex which has been a significantly weaker polar vortex uh you know than, than we had last uh, year in particular Right, so uh, let's have a look at uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to week. So red lines, 30-year upper air temperature average. We're at Liverpool today. So uh, we're starting off a little bit cooler than average at the moment uh, at Liverpool. Generally saying quite cool over the next few days. In March, of course, Westerlies don't guarantee that it's going to be overly mild. In January, Westerlies will nearly always be associated with milder than average temperature. But by taking it into the spring, Westerlies aren't necessarily guaranteed 
to be all that much. It just depends where the origins of the air are coming from. If the air is coming off Greenland, then it's going to be relatively cool in March, and that would be even more so in April, be even more so in, in to May, and even more so into June, uh, and so on. Um, if the air is, of course, coming from the Azores and the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and from the tropical Atlantic Ocean, then it, it will be mild uh, with, with westerlies. But it does depend on the origins of the air from now onwards, and even more so the further on into the spring and into the summer that you happen to go. So anyway, for the next few days, the westerlies are going to be generally uh, uh, bringing in relatively cool air. Uh, well, at the moment, of course, we're bringing in like a north east but wind will revert westerly next week. There is a push-up in the temperature uh, going on uh, through the early part of next week. It's associated with an area of low pressure, though, it's just a warm sector. And then after that, relatively cool again as we go up to the middle part of March. Into the second half month, this period just here, we possibly see the uh, upright temperatures getting a little bit milder then. Precipitation wise, going to be a lot of dry weather over the next few days, but then turning more unsettled next week and uh, on into the middle part of March. Possibly a bit of a drying trend once we get into the second half of the month. Temperature anomaly on the 5th through to the 13th March is going to be uh, cooler than average in most parts of Europe, actually. Ireland and the UK is included in that, so a relatively chilly week coming up. Precipitation anomalies uh, from the 5th through to the 13th of March. Not too far from average, a uh, bit drier than average for more east areas, a little bit wetter than average for more west areas, all very typical of uh, a zonal spell of weather. Latest wind flow map from earthnoldschool.net shows that we are bringing in some colder winds from the east and north east today around an area of high pressure. Westerlies will return next week. This is how the UK Met is looking for Monday. The high pressure is going to give us quite a cold weekend. It's breaking down on Monday. Uh, low pressure is beginning to move in from the Atlantic. And through the course of next week, it turns more and us. So by the middle of next week, we're into proper old wet and windy weather there. Gale force, west south westerly, and bouts of heavy rain too. Active cold front sweeps through the country Wednesday into uh, Thursday. And behind that, it turns colder as the air switches uh, to the northwest. That's as far as we go with the uh, UK came out to Thursday the 11th of March bringing in a, a cold northwesterly wind with wintry showers particularly in northern and western regions. Uh, GFS again the rich breaking down uh, through the early part of next week. Income below press systems off the Atlantic looking wet and windy there around the middle part of next week gale force winds and heavy rain leading to a colder second half to next week with a strong northwesterly wind bringing wintry showers to the north and to the west as well. Heading up towards day 10 uh, still Still unsettled, low pressure continues to move in from off the Atlantic with further bouts of wet windy weather. Another stormy spell there potentially on the 16th of March with gale force winds and heavy rain. Uh, we finish up right at the very end of a GFS run uh, looking like this. It gets us to the 21st of March, possibly signs then that we're beginning to get some higher pressure building up from the uh, from the Azores. So maybe starting to turn spring light then. Notice all of these purple colours around green and ice, and that's the polar vortex back in business. We didn't have that throughout most of the winter, but into the spring the polar vortex has returned, and it's still there right at the very end of a GFS run associated with those cold temperatures at 10 HPA and of course the strong uh, the stronger than average zone of wind. This is the precipitation type forecast based on that uh, GFS run. So we see plenty of rain piling in from the Atlantic. This from weather out, by the way. Plenty of rain piling in from the Atlantic through the middle of next week. Strong winds too. It gets a bit colder later next week. Showers turn uh, wintry again across northern, northwestern parts of the country. Maybe some wintry showers coming into Wales as well through the second half of the next week. Possibly some longer spells of rain running across the south there through Friday on the northern edge of that. There would be potential for the wintry weather, although the GFS uh, doesn't really show it. Precipitation type forecast, but on the northern edge of that, there might be some wintry weather later next week as that low pressure runs across the south. That area of rain runs across the south. Another little uh, runner here on Saturday. This is Saturday 13th of March. Again, heavy rain into Wales, some snow associated with that. All very marginal, as you would expect, into March, but there's a little bit of potential there for some uh, wintry weather through the second half of next week. Some of which, that the ECM has also been flirting with. Uh, GEM, again, the high pressure is breaking down uh, on Monday. As we go through next week, increasingly wet and windy. Gale force winds, heavy rain sweeping the country, eventually leading to a cold and showering northwesterly uh, wind. 
heading up towards day 10, the uh, GFS keeps on the south. It's a bit milder by day 10. Winds are coming from the southwest, but still low pressure is bringing firm bouts of wet and windy conditions. Icon, again, all much of a much. This high pressure breaks down early next week, back into wet and windy weather, strong to gale force winds and outbreaks of heavy rain sweeping through the country, eventually leading to uh, a cold northwesterly wind, which takes us up to Friday the 12th of March. And again, we're watching out for little disturbances running into that cold air. Uh, that might produce more general outbreaks of rain, sleet or snow. ECM, uh, again, we're breaking down that ridge through the course of next week, turning increasingly wet and windy, a cold and showery northwesterly wind setting in there by Thursday, 11th of March, still looking cold and showery uh, into uh, in towards day 10 as well. That's as far as we get with the uh, ECM to the 15th of March, day 10. And again, uh, low pressure is pushing up from off the Atlantic Ocean and quite a settle. This is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run. Again, it's starting off quite dry, but increasingly going towards unsettled weather next week. Properly wet and windy here through the middle part of next week. Heavy rain and gale force winds and then lots of wintry showers piling into the north and west into the second half next week. Uh, some sort of general area of rain here uh, around uh, the end of next week and next weekend running across the south, possibly bringing a little bit of sleet and snow with it. So uh, again, watch out for these runners to push across the south uh, within that cold air mass. Let's head up towards day 10, then we begin to get a bit milder, but still more rain piling in from off the Atlantic. Can't show you the option on the table within the ECM ensembles again today, but we may I may be able to bring you some uh, information in terms of the ECM ensembles tomorrow. Uh, so they may return tomorrow, but not from the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, lastly, Surface V2 uh, is looking like this. These are uh, this 700 mm high dominant for April. So, uh, CFS today, you have a high pressure in the Atlantic and to our east northeast. Well, it looks quite high pressure dominated. Low pressures up towards Greenland and uh, Iceland. <coughs> Excuse me. Winds are in from like a westerly direction. You expect a relatively uh, mild April uh, with that. The temperature anomaly for April is slightly above average. And no particular signal for the precipitation anomaly. I would have thought it should be a relatively dry month, though. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, please tell you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You're going to be able to see future weather content if you uh, do that. Tell your friends, family, everybody else to subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing this. Uh, for guys, worth this, we're grinding to 11k subscribers. So thank you so much. And um, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, that's what you have today. But I think stratosphere-wise, I wanted to to uh, give you the information because I haven't looked at the stratosphere for a while, so I thought we'd do that today, and uh, and that's what you have to take with what's going on in the stratosphere. Looking very unsettled next week. Uh, also, you know, we'll get colder next week. Wintry showers in the north, maybe something a little bit wintry further south. Where we get one of those little systems running into that cold air. So a lot to keep an eye on, I think, for next week. And of course, the weekend forecast will have more about this in detail uh, tomorrow. But that's it for today's video. No live stream, as I say, tonight. We're, we're off now for next few Friday nights. So, uh, no live, uh, tonight. Um, and tomorrow we're going to start off with the ECM WS six weeks look ahead, have a weekend forecast, as I just said, and we'll have the 10 to 14 day, which may well include some ECM ensemble data. More about that tomorrow. But, uh, from, uh, for this one, for, for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.